Hi, it's Lee from the Japanese Water Gardens. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can construct your own DIY pond filter. Simple and cheap to make, the design of this filter can be tailored to your own requirements and available materials. Perfect for a small pond or quarantine system, anyone who likes to make things themselves will find this video of interest. So keep watching. The first thing that you're going to need is a suitable container for your filter. I managed to find an inexpensive plastic pressure seal barrel. The barrel was in excellent condition and had not been used for storing any harsh chemicals. It is strong, UV stable and has a good fitting lid. It is also easy to drill. The barrel does have a tight radius but it is not so severe as to present me with any problems. There are other containers that would work equally well but don't use anything that will break down in sunlight or bulge out the sides when it is full of water and media. You need something strong and durable. The simple design uses only a basic selection of fittings which you will find on sale at any good aquatic outlet or hardware store. I am using a one and a half inch hose tail three by one and a half inch threaded bulkhead connectors, a one and a half inch T-piece, a one and a half inch valve, and about nine feet of one and a half inch pipe, and a few one and a half inch 90 degree bends. You're also going to need some solvent glue and a tube of aquarium silicon. My flow for this filter is gonna be around 500 gallons, so the one and a half inch fittings are perfect. If I was planning on running a larger pump, I would take it up to 2 inch or possibly even 3 inch if I was going to be pumping over 1200 gallons. For the media I have chosen a bag of Japanese filter matting offcuts. Torn up into small chunks they make an excellent surface area for the nitrifying bacteria to multiply on and they don't break the bank. I also had a few old filter brushes from a filter that was no longer needed so they will help to fill up the space in the tank. Of course there is a huge selection of other media that you could use, including Alpha Grog, Flowcore, various exotic ceramics, the list is endless. But in truth, almost anything inert with a good surface area will do the job. Yes, that includes plastic bottle tops and your granny's hair rollers. To give me some mechanical filtration, I'm using a pack of pond filter sponges, three different grades, each about an inch thick. Now, on with the build. The first job is to measure down 6 inches from the top of the barrel and mark two points on opposite sides. The third point is marked a few inches up from the bottom of the barrel. Then I drilled out three holes of a suitable size for the one and a half inch fitting. A hole saw is perfect for the job. I cleaned up each of the holes with a sharp blade and a file to remove burrs from the hole saw. I checked that the fittings would fit on the tank, but they were just a little bit tight. So I used a file to widen out each one until the fitting slipped in easily. I then applied a generous bead of aquarium silicon to each part of the three threaded bulkhead fittings. I installed each bulkhead fitting and tightened up the threaded nuts. The fitting in the bottom was awkward to reach, so I used a set of pump pliers. I then dipped my finger in a little washing up liquid and ran it around each fitting to smooth out the silicon. When cured, the silicon forms a watertight seal on the tank. I then used a handsaw to cut several sections of the one and a half inch pipe. The first piece runs from one of the top bulkhead fittings to the one and a half inch T piece positioned roughly in the center of the tank. A short section of pipe goes into the top of the T piece to serve as an overflow, should the filter ever become blocked. It is important that this pipe finishes well below the top of the barrel. A longer piece of pipe is then connected to the bottom of the T-piece. It needs to reach down to the bottom of the tank. I like to cut the bottom on a steep angle so that the pipe can never go flat onto the bottom of the tank. I then added a 90 degree bend and a hose tail to the outside of the inlet bulkhead. The fittings on the outside of the filter need gluing with solvent weld glue. 
Solvent weld glue is fast acting, so it needs to be right first time. The inlet hose tail is glued into the 90 degree bend, and the bend is glued into the bulkhead fitting. The 1.5 inch valve is glued to a short section of pipe, then glued to the bottom bulkhead fitting. To help ensure that the drain will completely empty the tank, I added a short section of pipe and a 90 degree bend. It is not necessary to glue any of the fittings on the inside of the tank. A friction fit will be perfectly adequate. I folded up the used filter brushes and dropped them into the bottom of the filter. There is no way that the brushes will block the outlet or drain. But if you were using something small, it would be necessary to prevent the media from blocking up the pipe. You could use a plant basket with a hole in it, or perhaps a grid across the hole bottom. I then went through the bag of Japanese matting offcuts and ripped them up into smaller pieces. The chunks were packed into the filter. Using a pair of scissors, I cut out the foam pack to fit the top of the filter. The slot allows the foam to sit tightly around the pipework. The remaining foam can be chopped up into chunks and mixed in with the other filter matting for extra biological media. Now, let's take a look at how the filter is installed onto a typical pond. This is a pump fed filter, so I've run a section of flexible hose from my pump into the UV. A further section of hose then runs from the UV to the hose tail fitting on the filter system. Everything is held tight and secure with Jubilee clips. Water enters the filter at the top. Flows down through the filter sponges that sift out any small solids. The water passes through the biological media where bacteria will break down the ammonia and nitrites. At the bottom of the tank, the water enters the discharge pipe and rises back upwards. Water then flows out through the pipework on the outside of the tank and falls back into the pond. Should a blockage develop in the filter, water will rise up and flow over the top of the T-piece, which serves as an overflow. To drain out the filter, you simply open up the discharge valve and the filter will empty. You can flush it clean with pond water and access the sponges for cleaning. Day one of operation. Water in the pond was very murky and you could not even see an inch into the water. Day two of operation. The water has started to clear a little and you can now see a couple of inches into the water. Day three. The water is definitely improving and you can now see several inches into the pond. I was eager to get this video uploaded to YouTube, so if you want to see how things are going with the filter in a month or so, then please subscribe to the channel. I hope that you found this video of interest. Post any questions in the comments below. It's bye for now from Lee at the Japanese Water Gardens.